everybody out there in YouTube land. This is Jim and Christian's with me and we got tagged and we didn't get tagged once. We're not one times a lady. Well, you're not a lady, but I'm, I'm not one times a lady. I'm two times a lady because my good buddy Sean Patrick Erston over at the her, wait, the her corner and my buddy from New Mexico, Bronco Juggalo, both were kind enough to tag me and I love it. That just makes me feel like you guys really I'm so needy. Ask the boy. I am so needy. So I'm very glad you guys both tagged us. Sorry it took us a while to get that. It's been a weekend though. Um, and this is the tag. And the tag is um, top movies in our own humble opinion that were the year that we were born. And I believe Andrew Bellina. I think this. that's true. If not, I'll put the correct person here. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, and you know what's really funny, guys, <laughs> is I was born in 1981, so I have a fucking, uh, my only trouble was, like, not, uh, like, I had a surplus of movies I could have picked. Him, on the other hand, had so much, he was kind of scraping the barrel. Okay, cause, you know. Because he was born, tell everyone. 2001. <laughs> Laugh. Everyone pointed. Everyone in the internet pointed and laugh at the boy. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I was—I'm actually pleasantly surprised because I was thinking like, this is gonna be fucking hard. I don't like most of that era of fucking horror. But looking back, there was actually a lot of really good stuff. Three of my favorite horror movies of all time came out that year. Yeah, and one of my favorite movies of all time came out. Well, actually, a couple, but one in particular. Like one of them that's my number one is one of my all-time favorites. In fact, it got me started on horror. But we'll get there when we get there. So how are we going to do this? Do I do mine or do we kind of go back and forth? Because that might confuse people since it's different years. I don't know. Okay. Honorable mentions first. Okay. Okay. Honorable mentions. Now this could have easily been a top 10 because yeah. I had so uh, You wouldn't know about this, but I had a surplus of movies. I'm going to be a okay. dick to him every time. Um, I had a surplus of movies, um, but I just, but for shocker guys, I actually, if you don't count the honorable mentions, I managed to keep it under five. But if you count the honorable mentions and it's 10 and for my honorable mentions and my first honorable mention and this if you guys know me you'll know why I have venom yeah that snake movie because I'm scared of snakes it scared me it's on Shudder if anyone's interested. It's not a bad movie. And good, granted, they, they said our own personal things, and like, and I, Jen is, has a phobia of snakes. I nearly was bitten by a rattlesnake when I was a very young child, and yeah, it did things to me. So Venom is my as an honorable mention. Another honorable mention of mine is The Prowler, and that should tell you what a good list this is if The Prowler only made it to an honorable mention instead of an actual on the list. It's my favorite slasher movie ever, so. I get that. I really enjoy it but there's a couple movies that I love better. I Again, guys, this is just your own personal things and you gotta understand nostalgia and other factors. They might not necessarily be the best movies on a technical level, but there's other things playing besides, you know, yeah, yeah. what I'm saying, guys. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place tonight. Another movie that, and this one will surprise you guys that it's not on my top five, Halloween 2 came out in the Solid enough. It's very solid. Burial Ground! That is Burial another, I love Burial Ground, that is another honorable mention. And um, the last one, and this is again one that probably should have been on my top five, but again, there's just a couple movies I love more, and that is The Burning. Who doesn't love The Burning? The Burning's a classic. Yeah, and those are all my honorable mentions. I'll let Christian get out of the way, and then we'll crack into our top five of all time. Uh, mine will be qu uh, quick. One is Bones, if you want to hear my more in-depth thoughts. We did a review a couple months back. So Snoop Dogg. The Snoop Dogg. It's not the best thing ever, but it's actually pretty solid. And the set, bit set in the 70s, like it looks really, it captures the feel of a 70s movie really well. Yeah, it's fun. This one, mainly just because the, I've, I've seen it so many times because Showtime plays it all the uh, time late at night. Route 666, starring Lou Diamond Phillips and one of my favorite actresses ever, Lori Petty. I, it's just a fun, stupid little movie about a, about a convict and, or a poli uh, a cop transporting a prisoner, and they get up, end up on Route 666, which is the highway to hell. It's it's a fun enough cheesy little flick. I get it. Dagon. Okay. Uh, another one is Dagon, which 
does not have any fucking thing to do with the Lovecraft story. It's another one of Stuart Gordon's Lovecraft adaptations. And much like most of his with Reanimator and From Beyond and Castle Ring, it doesn't have much to do with um, Dagon. Reimagining. Well, Dagon's weird because it's more of an adaptation of Shadow of Innsmouth than Dagon. I get that. Um, but no, it's just a fun, weird little movie where a guy finds out that he's a fish man and also he might be fucking his fish sister. As you do. He's and a massive, uh... The, I'm, a ma I'm both a massive Stuart Gordon and uh, Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft fan, so, you know, kind of got to be on the list. And Joyride starring Paul Walker. It, it, it's just a really fun, sim uh, cheesy little movie reimagining re of Duel. They're, all, the whole series, I think, is re kind of underappreciated. They're cheesy, fun, but it's it, to me it's kind of like uh, how a lot of people feel about Wrong Turn. <laughs> uh, Joyride's kind of that for me. <laughs> We're gonna rewatch. We're gonna rewatch the Joyride movies. Fuck you. <laughs> you couldn't have picked one of the wrong turns. I'm sure there was one. Actually, no. None of them came out, and also until Henry Rollins gets introduced, I think those movies are kind of shit. Damn it. Okay, so I guess uh, now that our honorable mentions are out of the way, I guess it's time to crack into our top ten list. And for my number five, and again, this should tell you what a good list this is, because a lot of people would probably be surprised this isn't at least number one or number two. And I really love this movie, but there are movies that I love more on this list. And remember, it's not just a technical level, nostalgia, and other factors. And so for my number five, it is our beloved Ash and Bruce Campbell and Evil Dead. Came out not... More the top of the list. There's a better mo Okay, they're not a better mo A better movie for Jen! I must state this. This is like... Nostalgia plays a part, damn it! I didn't discover the Evil Dead movies till I was about six or seven, and like, the movie that's on the top of my list, I discovered when I was four. So That, that captures you as a person so well. I didn't find out about the Evil Dead movies till I was in preschool. <laughs> First grade, first or second grade, six or seven. Yeah, I did not discover the Evil Dead movies till I was a little bit, maybe seven. May, I think I was about seven. I did not discover the Evil Dead movies. So I, the, the the one at the top of my list I saw when I was four. So yeah. I hear that. So what is your number five for two thousand and one? Okay. okay, people might be laughing, but you can't, oh, you can't fight me that this is the best slasher franchise that obligatory got set uh, tossed into space. Jason X. Personally, I really love Jason X. I think it's a really fun, cheesy slasher movie, and that's what it's set out to be. You just love anything in space. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, but I legitimately would say, out of all of the ones of Hellraiser, Leprechaun, and I'm sure there's other big slasher franchises that eventually went to space, but those are the, like the three big ones. It's better than Leprechaun 4 and Hellraiser 4. Like, it's still you can still say it's not the best Friday movie, but for what it is, it, those movies were trying to be a bit more, you know? Leprechaun was mostly like feeding off, oh look, Warwick Davis was in Star Wars, let's make a bunch of Star Wars references for no real reason. And Hellraiser 4 cheats, because it's technically not even set in space for most of the movie. Whereas Jason X just, go, just takes, Jason's in space now, let's have fun, let's have him killing a bunch of simulated teenagers who want to have sex with him. Let's make Uber Jason. Let's make it, let's make someone else in the movie say, it's okay hey, guys, he, he just, just wants, wants his, his machete, machete back. back. I don't like it, but I like that, that line, line. That line captures the Friday the 13th franchise so well. Yeah, it kind of does. So I guess we're on to number four, and for my number four, and when I, when Little Jen, this was some, this was a genre of movies that I discovered at a pretty young age, and like, Cannibal Holocaust oh is my, my favorite, God. but it wasn't out in, in 1981, but you know what was out, and I remember watching this on Showtime or Cinemax really late one night when I was just a wee young lad, and it fucking blew me away, and that is Cannibal Ferox. Fight me, people! You put... And one, arguably one of the weaker Cannibal Holocaust Fuck you, it's, a, it's good! It's over the evil dead. I told you I I'm don't. judging a little. I told you I don't. I didn't start the evil dead till I was about seven, eight, pro maybe six, eight, seven or eight. Yeah, seven or eight. I did not discover them until then. I saw the Cannibal Ferrex sooner. I like my cannibal movies. You're a fucking weird <laughs> kid. <laughs> I love cannibal movies. I ask Christian to this day, I fucking love my cannibal movies. All the cannibal, I've seen 
all of the cannibal movies. Oh, and I've seen like all of, all, like, I think it's at least three movies <laughs> called Cannibal Holocaust 2. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm a fan of those films. And again, th this definitely has, I mean, it's not, is it better if, if, on Evil Dead? No, but uh, for, for but if you were in Little Jen shoes and be glad you're not, like, I was, I loved cannibal movies when I was a little kid. It was like, wow, those Italians make some good movies, you know? This is just, yeah, I was like a little redneck kid and this was like such an education for me. Joe Bob. Joe Bob. <laughs> Joe Bob. So yeah, so what about you? All right, one that I don't hear hardly anyone talk about, which is weird considering how much this director is kind of getting a lot of um, notice as of recently. Uh, Larry Fassenden's first time doing a movie about a Wendigo just called Wendigo. It's not bad. It's a really fun little flick. It's more of a psychological thriller than like a creature feature that you would expect it to be. But you're working in 2001, you had to take what you could Yeah, get. and it was like, it, <laughs> if it was, you, for, it happened, was his first, but it was one of his earlier movies. It was. Before he got like recognized, I think this was just, I think this might have been the first movie where he started using the glass eye picks thing, so. Yeah, no, it's just a fun, simple little movie about a family who go out into um, the out, out into a cabin for the winter. There are some hunters around. There might be a Wendigo, <laughs> might not, might be some ghost Indians. Maybe you're gonna have to watch the movie to find out. But it's just a really solid little fl uh, flick, and I'm a massive Larry Fassenden fan. He's probably one of my favorite, both directors and Glass Eye Picks is one of my favorite movie studios. In yeah, nowadays. yeah, he's just awesome. We're both big fans. If you ever seen of our videos, we love you. Yeah, no, I love that dude stuff. <laughs> yeah, we do. Um, okay, I, I don't want you to say a fucking word next for my next pick. Shut up, because you hate this movie and you're wrong. Oh God, you're wrong. You're wrong. Okay, so this is a Toby Hooper. This is probably his most underrated film. Some people Eaten alive. Shut up. This life force. So anyway, leaders for Mars. Just shut up and sit there. So like, he's wrong. He's so wrong. For some reason, some people don't give this movie appreciation like they should. I love this movie, and it is the immortal Funhouse. Fight me, people. It's a fun movie. The kid is a little annoying. I'll acknowledge. But I still love that damn movie, and I don't know why people don't automatically go Funhouse as much as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I said it. Almost, I like it just as much. Almost like one of those is a genre-defining movie and the other's Funhouse. Shut up. There are, there are other fans out there of Funhouse, damn it. I know there's fans. The, I, I'm ashamed of him. He doesn't know. Funhouse sucks. I'm sorry. I'm going to say no, Funhouse not. is Toby Hooper's worst movie. You're off the channel. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Big Shot, what about you? All right, now we get into three of my favorite horror movies of all time. First up, Ichi the Killer. Good movie. It's a great movie. It would be my favorite Mike movie if it not if it were not for Audition. Ichi's a in some ways I'd say it's a, it's even more than Audition. It captures everything that is Takeshi Mike's movies. It's goddamn crazy and weird at moments while still being brutal and gory and brilliant and very brilliantly shot and edited and everything else while also being a very interesting character study while also not making a lot of sense at some points. Yeah, Mike is just a director. Even people who are experienced with Mike, sometimes even we're like, what are you doing, What the dude? fuck are you doing? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and we didn't know until we saw Mr. Meathook's video, there is a prequel out that's just yeah, Ichi just 1. Ichi, Ichi 1, which yeah. we need to check out. Yeah. We're, we're going to be on the hunt for that. I don't think Mike directs this one, but we're still very interested. But yeah, no, it's a re Ichi is a really great movie. It is it's a, movie. a In many ways, I'd say it's more of a brutal movie than Audition. And which one do you like the better? Audition just for the subject matter that it's tackling and all the metaphors it uses, but I, you know, I would rather watch E.T. again than Audition, because Audition can be kind of a hard set. I love, I love them both. I couldn't pick. That's cool. So we are on to my number two, and this one, if you give me shit for it, you really are off the channel. I know you won't, because I know you like this movie, and I love this movie. House by the Cemetery. Oh, it's great. It's the best Gates of Hell movie, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah another weirdly continuing with your thing of movies with goddamn annoying kids, though. Yeah, admit it. Is he the most annoying kid in a horror movie? It's either him, kid from Fun House, or kid from Stepfather 3. Yeah, yeah. But this, this kid, I think, is worse. I'd say this is probably the worst, and it doesn't. I've I, never known a horror fan that has said, God, I love that movie, but God, I hate it. 
needed that Especially kit. Especially the dub version of the kit. Like, they yeah. make him even more annoying because they give him more lines than he had in the original. But minus that, it is a brilliant movie. And this is another... The, talk about nostalgia. I discovered this movie at a fairly young age, and I it just blew me away. Like, I, did, I was just a little kid, and I was like... Just, it just, wow, it just, that, that's all you can say about a movie like this is just, wow, yeah. I, I love this movie. You know, minus the kid, I, there's no flaws in it. Yes, it's weird, but if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know Jen's kind of a fan of Also, it's a shallow movie, so yeah. of course it, 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 of course it, god damn it, you know, like that ending is, makes no fucking sense yes. at all and has no build up. But it's pretty cool. Yes, it is. And it's just another one that, you know, like, it, 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 it's different from Argento, but it's still so jello -y. Yeah, it, it's, it's, just... very, it's very much like Fulci, where Argento was more about, like, you know, the colors and the pretty cinematography. He was, like, the more, he was... like, he had a more aesthetic taste, and, like, Fulci was kind of the smut, but in the Ful best yes, way. Yes, Fulci was the smut director. He directed whatever the fuck he wanted to make. But he, but in a way, he was like Argento, because he directed smut beautifully. Oh, God, yes. I, 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 who do you love? more I can't tell you yeah no yeah, yeah. No, both of them have a lot of great merits yeah but house by the cemetery is one that y if you haven't ever seen you need to because yeah. it's just a fucking classic so that's my number two yes there is a movie that I even love more than house by the cemetery but we have to listen to what Christian has for his number two for 2001 too bad it's not 2002 that would have flowed better I should have had you one more year. Okay, so what's your number two? Am I gonna get? You're looking at me like I'm gonna give you shit. You're probably gonna give me. Well, I, you, I don't know, but I know you don't like this director. I don't know how you feel exactly about this movie. Uh, my favorite movie by Guillermo del Toro and my favorite uh, ghost movie ever, The Devil's Backbone. It is a beautiful movie. It's one of it's one of those movies that does that does. I don't care who you are. I've never heard anyone who hasn't watched this movie and said that makes me want to be a filmmaker, man. Like all the cool stuff he does. To surmise my love of this movie, the in the opening of this in the opening of the movie, there our main character sees this giant fucking pair of scissors. To, just to show, just, and just to get across how small the audience was in this movie, Argento spent like a thousand dollars of his own money to make giant fucking scissors that were the size of, that were bigger than the kid, like five, ten foot size scissors, just to make the kid, just to get that really Scale. goddamn cool shot and show how small the kid was in this story. It's a great film. I love it. I don't hate uh, Del Toro's work. I don't. It's just. For me, I love. He shoots things beautifully. For me, uh, the only movie of his that's ever really worked for me is um, Shape of Water. Shape of Water. I like a lot of his aspects. For me, he's just a little too whimsy. Like that's my problem. There, he's just a little too whimsy for me. But I love. He's a director I love. I just can't love completely. Yeah, I can't I go all the way I with him. That. But he does shoot things beautifully. I don't hate him at all. I I, I, I like him, and he's such a cool person. Oh yeah, he's an awesome. But person. but I I it's just he's a little. I like more again if you've been watching. Watching this film, Jen kind of likes downers, smut. smut and downers, and just kind of that sort of. I, I have a different thing, and whimsy doesn't work too well with Jen as a usual rule. Christian is more the whimsy one, <laughs> the guy in the I'm devil. Fu horns. I'm fucking whimsical. <laughs> So yeah, so I guess that leads us to our number one. Yes. And it's probably not, if you guys know me, you guys probably aren't going to be too surprised because it's a movie that hasn't been mentioned yet and you guys know I have a massive heart on for this. This is a movie that set me on my course to horror. Four years old, people. I'm not over-exaggerating. Four years old. My parents taped this, and I watched it over and over and over again. This movie gave me a love, not only for filmmaking, not only for horror, but also full moons, great tunes, and wolves. I love all of those things. And, of course, I am talking about the immortal classic, American fucking werewolf in London. God, I love this movie! Not the howling. I like the howling a lot. I do, but I again, I love American Werewolf. I want to agree you on every aspect that the, that a were American is better than the howling. Except I way prefer the howling's werewolf design than the American Werewolf one. I was never too into the werebear design that the American Werewolf had. I would way prefer like the very like t uh, bipedal, uh, creepier designs that uh, Howling had. I, but otherwise, I will agree with you that uh, that um, American Werewolf is the better movie. I love I love Howling too, but I just like Amer America. This is what I love Howling too. Stabber's werewolf bitch as well. I love American Werewolf in London because, like I said, this just 
opened my mind, people. You guys don't know. I watched this, and a friend of my mother said she's going to turn out really wrong, Barb. And I did turn out really wrong, but not the way she meant. Yeah. I just, it opened my mind. It showed me humor. It showed me, it just showed me so many things. And I came from a very small po podunk town, and movies were like, showed me a completely different world, completely different thought process. And just movies, just fucking movies and music. This was the first movie to show me like how good of a marriage music and movie can be. Oh my God, the music in this yeah. movie is just fucking amazing. So yeah, American Werewolf in London is my favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time. And it's, it's just, it holds a lot of nostalgia. So of course that is what I'm going to pick for my best movie of 1981, my birth year. What about you? Okay, this one you, I could uh, you understand. I've heard many people say that it's technically not a horror movie. It's more of a drama or a thriller. But to me, it is a horror movie because it captures the one of uh, arguably the most horrifying aspect of life: the fucking creepy and horrible shit that humanity can do. Frailty. It's a good movie. I love Frailty. This is the movie that this, along with uh, Near Dark, uh, Dark, are the reason why I consider Bill Paxton one of the most underrated actors ever. Yeah. He, as well as he also directed this movie. I always this, forget that. Yeah, he did. This was his uh, this was his first major directing uh, thing, and one, and one I think the last one he did too. Wasn't there a lot of issues on set? Yes, there was a lot of issues on set, but he worked through fairly, uh, fairly well. He wasn't the most graceful of uh, first-time directors, but he got through and made one of the best movies of the the best movie of 2001, I would say. And wasn't it? I don't mean to interrupt you, but wasn't it one of those movies that like now times really digging? But at the time, it was oh, a very it was, it, it yeah was financially it bombed. I believe critically, a lot of people didn't like it. I believe. I think like, it was very mixed. Yeah, it was very mixed. A lot of people didn't know how to feel feel about it, and audience-wise, very few people liked it and it didn't help that it was being boycotted by the church yeah um but no this movie is just this is this is a great uh, uh, film talking about the how how corrupting that faith can be it shows both the great the great things that faith can bring but letting a, a, but belief in absolute faith can all it can do some really fucked up shit to pe uh, people. The basic premise is we have two separate timelines. One timeline we have a, ki a guy telling the FBI that he knows who the God Hand Killer is, who's someone they've been after for a long time. And the other timeline we have him as a child, and he hears and his father says he hears the voice of God telling him that he has to become a demon hunter. And you go, and you can kind of figure out where things go from there. It's a be it's a great film. It yeah. is a mass. It is one. It is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated movies of all time. Like it does not. It deserves way more credit, not just as a horror film, but as just a film. It's a. It does a lot of incredible stuff. Yeah. Especially for how low budget Paxton had to work with. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look like a low budget. Yeah. Movie. And he and Paxton gives a chilling fucking performance as the father. McConaughey's really good in it. Yeah. It's one. Of, it's it's one. Of the, it's for the first movie I immediately think of when people make fun. And McConaughey is being kind of hammy, and then he does, and then he did this role. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. It kind of cleared his sins for the Texas Chainsaw. Kind of, yeah. But yeah. no, it's a really, really great movie. One of my favorite movies of all time, and in my opinion, the best movie of 2001. I get that. I get that. It is a good movie. None of your others were that great. Okay, oh, fuck except for H. E. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> I'm just giving my boy Al. You you, you put Funhouse on your list. I'm not ashamed of Funhouse. I'm not so. ashamed of Funhouse. Fuck you and your Funhouse hating ways. Fuck you and your Funhouse hating ways. Time's gonna judge that I was correct and you were wrong. Cause you're lame. <laughs> Only lame people hate Funhouse. Toby Hooper, if he was alive, would slap you. No, I'm pretty sure he asked me money for booze. <laughs> anyway, but that is our thing, and I'm sure uh, everyone else probably managed to do this in what ten minutes. Well, Brad's was five, <laughs> and he did ten movies. Yeah, yeah, but th but and I and I'm so glad that you, Sean and Brad both tagged us. That is so awesome that you guys think of us. We really love being tagged. Um, yeah, we really enjoyed this. I guess this is time where we tag some people. I suppose so. Probably everybody we know has been tagged, but I'm going to tag a couple people just in case you haven't been tagged. I'm going to tag Adam Beaumont. I am going to tag my sister from another Mr. Jenna over at the Horror of the Horror. And I'm going to tag Casher One. Okay. And 
I'm going to tag our good buddy Monty G, oh, uh, the horror miser, because I don't, th I don't think he's been I tagged. I don't believe he's been tagged. So, yet. yeah, and anyone else who wants to play, feel free to use our names where we, I, I can't think of anyone else because I think pretty much everyone we know has been tagged. So, there you go. Enjoy. Love to hear everybody's answers. And sorry it's so long, but you people know. By now they know. Yeah. When yeah. they tag us, oh, it's going to be a 30 minute video. We can't just say this movie, this <laughs> we have to go in depth, and then, you know, we have the five minutes of us arguing. Arguing and telling each other to go fuck ourselves. Basically, because we that's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, so I think that's all we want to say about our favorite horror movies from the year we were born. 1981, so much better. <laughs> great year, Sparky! Had a great year! 2001 rocks! Well, I went, I really, I, well, I thought it got, went in to go thinking, oh, this is going to be awful. I didn't, I really, you did good. yeah, I actually did, th would say those are probably most, most of the best uh, stuff. You also, you know, very few, it, well, it wasn't the best year, but you know. You work with what you have. It's better than the 90s. Not, not, not everyone has good years like me and Brad that, 1981, yeah! Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> And with that, I'm going to go, like, hit the boy now. So I'm going to... I'm gonna, yeah. Stop it! <laughs> ah! It's always the fucking tag. Uh, anyway. Dog. Yeah. I'm going to kill the boy. Yeah. <laughs> the next video, yeah. I'm, I'm looking for a new editor and a new partner because I'm going to go kill the boy. Yeah. Um, and with all that out yeah. of the way, I'll say what I always say. If you do happen to like the contents of this channel, I don't know why, and you haven't hit that subscriber button, we, please hit that subscriber button because we appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day, a good evening, and 1981, yeah! 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 yeah. 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 Bye, guys! Yeah! yeah.